How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this black screen of death issue. It's been affecting everyone, whether you have an LCD or a Steam Deck OLED, and unfortunately, there's no real way to fix it. So I'm going to tell you how to avoid it. Before I jump into it all, I am on the road to 50,000 subscribers. So whether you're a longtime viewer of the channel or you're new here, it would really help me out if you subscribed and set your notifications to all. I don't do subscriber pushes that often, but I noticed like 90% percent of the people who watch this channel aren't subscribed so I figured I should just give you a reminder to check that red button and make sure it turns gray all right let's just jump into this first news story here which is the black screen of death issue that's been plaguing users of the Steam Deck for a very long time now I actually heard about this from a few YouTube comments and I decided to look into it on Reddit and there's a pretty detailed thread about exactly what the issue is I'm just gonna call it a Steam Deck from now on I don't want to keep saying that it affects both Steam Decks you know that by now it affects both Steam Decks. I'm just going to call it Steam Deck. So basically what's happening is when people leave their Steam Deck in sleep mode for too long or they allow the battery to die while they're playing, once they turn it back on, they're faced with a black screen that cannot be fixed. The weird thing is it doesn't seem to be fully breaking the screen though because when you plug the Steam Deck into a dock and use it with a monitor or a TV, it'll work just fine on the monitor but the actual screen on the Steam Deck won't turn on. And then once you're on one of those screens where you know where the buttons are on the actual like interface, if you use the touch screen it's still active so the steam deck is basically darkening the screen's brightness all the way to zero so you just can't see it and there are actually a few variations of this issue some people have it when they let their steam decks die and then they turn it on and then the screen isn't really working but they hear the boot up animation and of course the fan starts spinning so they're like aware that the steam deck is working like all the lights turn on and everything like that and the way they fix it is by just holding the power button and hard resetting their steam deck so if you run into this issue that's something that's definitely worth Worth trying because I actually did run into it on my launch edition Steam Deck. I since sold it to my friend Sean, but but back when I was running beta updates, this would happen pretty frequently. So I switched it back to the stable version and then the issue just basically went away. But yeah, it was super frustrating having to hard reset the Steam Deck over and over again to just fix this issue that should have been addressed a long time ago. The worst part of this issue though, is that if you get the more severe version of it, like you allow the thing to completely die and stay at 0% battery for long enough, you'll get the worst version of this issue. Once you hit that point, Point, there is virtually no way to fix it without getting an RMA from Valve. People have tried things like reinstalling the Steam Deck OS, they've tried plugging it into a monitor and deactivating the Steam Deck screen, like turning it off and making the monitor the only output and then switching it back on. That doesn't work. And some people have even gone as far as to fully replacing the Steam Deck screen by picking a new one up off of a iFixit or getting the Deck HD screen. And it's just a severe enough issue with the hardware and the software being out of sync or out of whack or whatever, that none of those fixes, like potential fixes actually work. So if you hit that point and like hard resetting, switching the screen out, reinstalling CMOS doesn't work, your only option is to contact Valve for an RMA. But that also presents a major issue in itself because Valve actually switched who they go through for RMAs basically before, like when the Steam Deck came out and people were dropping them or they'd get defective units in the mail, everything was handled by Valve. So if you opened up a Steam support ticket, you would get a response from someone from Valve. They were always really cool about expediting the shipping of the new Steam Deck. They'd make sure you were taken care of even if it was a user error. Like that famous user who was doing the SSD upgrade and accidentally left the battery uh, plugged in and it fried their motherboard on their Steam Deck. Valve went ahead and replaced that person's Steam Deck free of charge. So they were extremely cool about doing RMAs, even if it was user error that created the issue, which was awesome. But then about a year after the Steam Deck came out, they started working with a new partner who's called United Radio. Now there are so many horror stories about United Radio on the internet. They also do RMA stuff for the Nintendo Switch. So when you send in your Switch Joy-Cons when they get stick drift, there are horror stories across the internet of people getting the wrong Joy-Con back and then they say, hey, you guys sent me the wrong Joy-Con back and then they say, well, we can't find that super limited edition one you sent in. So you're sorry, you're shit out of luck basically. You're stuck with the one we sent you. And there's even more horror stories of people sending in Joy-Cons and Switches and either getting back the wrong console, getting back a console that's more defective than when they initially sent it in, or the issue just isn't fixed at all. And I have had a bad experience with them as well. I, I'm just like really clumsy when it comes to the Steam Deck. All my other stuff, I never drop. I treat everything as like if it's a baby. I don't want anything to break, but I had two issues where the first time I just accidentally dropped my Steam Deck because I was rushing out the door and it broke the left bumper. I tried to take it apart and fix it, but it actually broke off the like little button that's raised up and depresses when you push the bumper. That was totally my fault. That time Valve actually fixed it free of charge, which again was awesome. They didn't have to do that. They could have charged 
me to fix that because again, it was user error, but they also expedited the return process, the repair process and the shipping, which was awesome. But then the second time, uh, basically what happened is I left my Steam Deck charging on my couch with the case open. And then when my wife was vacuuming, she unplugged it so she could get in that area of the room and she closed the case. So then we were going to see Top Gun Maverick. We we're going to take an Uber and I just grabbed my Steam Deck case by the handle. It wasn't zipped. The Steam Deck fell three inches and once again, the bumper issue happened, but this time it was with the right bumper. So I said, hey, last time it went pretty well. Again, I was still happy to pay for the repair process. I opened up a support ticket and then this time it took like three full days for them to respond, which I thought was a little weird. And then I got a response from United Radio that said, hey, this is going to cost 150 bucks. I was happy to pay it. I sent it into them. It took a long time to get there versus the first time I broke my Steam Deck's bumper. Then once it got there, it took them at least like three or four days to even take a look at it. And then they called me and said that they were going to end up charging me even more money because when they opened up the Steam Deck, one of the little tabs on the back uh, plate of the Steam Deck was snapped off. Now I had done a lot of SSD upgrades by that point. I was doing them for videos on the channel. It was my second Steam Deck. I had done a couple there as well, just to take my SSD out so I could put it back in with the RM8 unit. And I was positive positive that I did not break that little clip. I use an iFixit kit. I use very soft little guitar picks to get it open. I'm meticulous when I do it, but once they already have the Steam Deck and they tell you that it's broken and it was user error, you can't do anything, right? Like it's my word against theirs. They were adamant that it was already broken and I don't know. I, I like genuinely don't know if that was me, but I'm 99% sure it wasn't. So they ended up double charging me because they said they wouldn't fix the issue with the bumper unless they also fixed the issue with the little tab being in there, which I thought was ridiculous. I was like, I don't care if there's a little tab missing because there's plenty more of them all around the Steam Deck. It's not going to cause a problem if you put that back plate back on and just leave it alone. But they were like, nope, we're not going to fix your bumper unless you pay us the 300 bucks. So they basically held my Steam Deck ransom took forever to do that fix and then it took over two weeks to get it back after they finally shipped it out. Obviously that's not as bad as the Nintendo Switch stories I just shared. Those are far worse because they don't come down to user error like stick drift and getting the wrong Joy-Con back is bad but like the new RMA process that they use in my opinion at least is terrible. So if you have to do that like you have to RMA your Steam Deck to get that black screen of death issue fixed like chances are it's going to be United Radio doing it and at that point they're going to start looking for any other issue that that they find with your Steam Deck and they're gonna wanna charge you for it, which I obviously think is absolutely ridiculous. I'm fine to pay for a user error thing, obviously, like I've said that multiple times, but once you start adding things on that don't affect the actual issue you're sending it in for, it's not right and I think it's kind of unacceptable. But this issue, even if you're out of the warranty period of the Steam Deck, this has been a known issue for a very long time. Like since the thing has come out, people have been running into this and basically like it hasn't become an overblown issue because Valve replaces the Steam Deck's pretty quickly. It was only affecting a small group of users, but now that people are out of that RMA period, a lot of them are finding that they're being charged for it. So even though you're out of the warranty period, I don't think it's fair at all to charge for the repair on something like this. And knowing how good Valve is at fixing things very quickly, like when it comes to Persona 3 Reload, they had a fix ready to go. There's the famous story of Elden Ring. They released a patch before the game came out that made it run really good on the Steam Deck without stuttering. There's countless examples of them being really proactive on fixing things. And when they're not proactive, they fix them very quickly. Like the most recent example I can think of is when Dragon's Dogma broke because of the DRM that Capcom ended up putting in the game. They had a patch ready on the like Proton Experimental branch within 10 minutes. Like it was such a non-issue at that point. That all came down to Valve being quick. So to know that this issue has been happening for this long and now it's happening to this many people, I think this needs to be prioritized at Valve and they need to figure this out. I'd understand why it was taking so long if it was a hardware issue with the actual screen because they have to go through a whole process of sourcing different screens. They have to address the issue with the manufacturer. There's a lot more that's involved there, but when it comes down to it actually being just software kind of breaking when the thing reaches zero battery, I think there's really no excuse for that not to be prioritized to the top of the list above pretty much any other feature when it comes to Steam Deck updates. There are a few very easy things you can do to avoid this issue, thankfully though. The first one is when you're not using your Steam Deck, just make sure it's plugged into a charger. 
I know people get scared of doing that because if you leave something plugged in all the time, it'll just keep it at 100% and charging from 99 to 100, 99 to 100, that can degrade the life of the battery. But Valve has implemented a feature in the Steam Deck's charging where once it gets to 100%, it'll actually stop charging and allow the battery to drain down to around 90% before it kicks back in again, which will preserve the Steam Deck's battery life. So there's really no risk at actually leaving it plugged in all the time. And you can also just be proactive about charging it back up once you get that 10% warning. Because once you get to 10%, I've noticed that whether you're playing a very easy to run game like Project Zomboid, or even if you're playing a harder to run game like Elden Ring, that 10% drains extremely quickly. Like sometimes it's only a minute or two before it goes from 10 to 5%. So I'm just being very careful now at this point to make sure that once I see that 10% battery warning, I plug my Steam Deck in and just leave it on the charger. It's really not that annoying because as I talked about in my accessories video I posted when I was on vacation, I have a charging brick that uh, came with a very long USB cable. I think it's like nine feet long. That's been long enough to charge it whether I'm on the couch, at my desk, or laying in bed. So it's not really that big of a problem to make sure my Steam Deck is always topped off. It's also going to be a lot easier for people who have the Steam Deck OLED, obviously, because the battery life is just overall much better. It comes down to the chip efficiency and also the fact that there's a slightly bigger battery in that device. I'm honestly very impressed with how good the battery life is in the Steam Deck to the point where I haven't really even felt the desire to bring my battery bank along. So yeah, I've just got to make sure though I bring it from now on because I never want my Steam Deck to hit 0%. And honestly, I have hit it a couple of times. I've left the Steam Deck for a couple of days when I got into Helldivers and it allowed the battery to completely drain. And I'm just so relieved and glad I didn't get this issue because now that I have the limited edition Steam Deck OLED, I don't want there to be any opportunity for that to go away, right? Like if I had a hardware issue and I had to send it into United Radio with all the horror stories about people getting the wrong Joy-Cons back and everything, I just fully expect at this point that that's exactly what would happen. And I'd get back either like a black LCD or a black Steam Deck OLED and this limited edition one that I went through mental turmoil to get would just disappear into the ether forever. And honestly, that would suck because as y'all know, I love Halloween and it's a Halloween edition Steam Deck. It's black see-through and orange. I could just never live with myself if I had to give that up. I baby the shit out of this thing and I make sure I treat it with like kid gloves from now on. So yeah, hopefully with this PSA out there from some channels like me and Fan the Deck, Valve catches word of this and gets it into the queue to be a high priority update. And also while they're at it, I would really appreciate it if they looked at the Steam Deck dock. It gets firmware updates and I know everyone hates updating the firmware on it because it's a shitty process. You have to unplug everything that's plugged into it. So if you use it as a USB-C dock like I have been, you have to unplug your keyboard your mouse, your monitor, and only leave the power cord plugged in and then plug it into your Steam Deck, the update will still potentially fail a couple of times and then it'll go through. Even with those updates though, so there's just been some total wonkiness with that dock. I used it as a USB-C hub, like I said. I was getting black flickering on my monitor, even with it plugged into the charger. It would take a long time to wake up my monitor. Sometimes it wouldn't at all. Usually I just know that that meant there was an update for it and I would update the firmware, but I went through a couple of firmware updates that didn't fix it. I looked into it and a lot of people are having problems with the Steam Deck dock, with the Steam Deck itself ever since SteamOS 3.6. So I would say the two most critical issues Valve needs to look at are this black screen of death and of course, course, some sort of firmware update or software update on the Steam Deck to fix the issues with the Steam Deck dock. Because as much as I'm fine with using something from JSOX or any other company because you get aluminum build quality or whatever, I'm just a sucker for using something official. And I feel like with Valve making this dock, it should be bar none the best dock you can get for the Steam Deck, especially since it's so much more expensive than all the competition. But yeah, that's all I've got for this week's Steam Deck news update. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.